Hi, this is Nancy LT Hamilton, and in this video we are going to make solderless beads, which are relatively simple, a little time consuming, but you can make very unique and fabulous beads. So I'm going to show you a couple examples of that in a second. So you might hear a subtle crunching in the background. Someone is having a snack. Not me. So anyway, these are the beads. I did have them on my newsletter and a few people asked me uh, how to make them. So uh, this video is going to show you how to do that. Um, so you don't need solder, but you do need a torch for annealing. And um, we're, I'm going to show you how to make a template to find center, which I also had in my newsletter. Those of you who haven't subscribed have been missing out. Um, you'll need a dapping set, which involves a punch, and its alternate part is a dot called a die, and a pair of these. Oh, this is a one and a half inch mat leather mallet that we are going to use to whack the uh, punches with, and you'll need some drill bits that we'll talk about, metal, blah, blah, blah. I will go on to that as we hit that part. So I'm going to start talking about um, discs now. So for a lighter, easier to work bead, I recommended the, uh, 24 gauge metal on these. Um, you're limited in the size of the bead by the size of your die in your tapping set. Um, also, uh, another recommendation, which I don't have, is having a flat um, die block that has as many, many depressions in it as you can get. Um, I'm going to have some links to a couple places that have much larger sets than mine. The gr subtle graduations in size really helps to shape these beads. Um, briefly, what the beads are, are domes that are put together and held together with a tube rivet. Um, and that's basically it. It's what, how you do it and what, how you alter it is what makes it really unique. So, um, on the back to the gauges, the smaller um, beads that you make, you can get away, do 26 or even 28 gauge, the smaller they get. And the bigger ones, if you're going to do over inch or over thicker metal, like a 22 or 20, would probably be better because you're going to do a lot more forming and with it and you've got room in the die for the metal to work. You don't want to use a 20 gauge in a making a tiny bead because all the metal is going to take up the depression as you'll see um, or not. So anyway, so that's basically um, it on the gauges. The discs can be purchased um, pre-done and if you're going to do a whole necklace with beads it's highly recommended that you buy them already um, shaped for you so you don't have to do that yourself. Generally they do come annealed or half hard and that's great for both. Um, I tend to make my own because I don't have tons of discs here and I don't do this that often so if I need them it's just pretty easy to go ahead and punch them with a disc cutter. Um, this is a disc cutter and um, it does have a right side and a wrong side so I always write on the correct top side. If you don't put this in the right way, it ends up marring the edges on here. Oh my, that is really in miserable shape. This is sets 15 years old, so it's had some wearage. So anyway, and this this is the part that's going to come in. You put the metal in between. Yeah, I can show you. Put the metal in here, and then the uh, punch cutter goes in here, and then you either whack it with a heavy brass mallet or, or the, the big size of this leather one and give it a wah because you can't hit it. You cannot hit it twice because what it does is it jumps and it'll leave two cut marks um, on, on the metal. So you don't want to ever hit this twice. This is a really good workout. You just stand back and wham, keep your hand out of the way. Goggles. Um, so anyway, that's one way. I also use it. I use this in my hydraulic press so I don't have to do all that hammering. So, but not everybody has a press. So figured I'd sh sh talk to you about the hammering fine. Uh, another way to cut discs, oh, there goes my list, which, if something didn't fall on the floor, what would my videos be like? So this is a little, a handheld punch, well, it's not little, it weighs about five pounds, 
Um, I'm not going to show you how to work it, but this is limited in size to about like that. This fits in there. Um, so you can, you can make really tiny beads with this. This is also good for punching little holes for running the tubing in. Um, I know they make bigger ones than these, but I think they're like prohibitively expensive. I'll try to do some research on that put it up on my site. So, uh, and the other option is to saw out your um, circles, which is a pain in the tush. Um, the good thing about it is you've got your center found already, which is going to be important for us. The center needs to be marked so that when we put our tubing through, it runs straight through the bead. So one side is an off here and the other side is an off here. So the center is muy importante. But right now, I'm just going to briefly show you. So if you're going to do a, let's say you're going to do a 20 millimeter uh, bead diameter disc you've got here. So what you need to do is set your markers at 10. Uh -oh, the studio assistant's getting wild up. What are you doing? <laughs> Sorry. Right in the middle of the math. So um, I also like to take my little um, punch that I use for marking uh, divots for drilling and make a little tap where I'm going to put the the center leg. So this is half the di this is the uh, half the diameter of the circle that we need. So this basically fits into that little divot I just put there. If I can get it in there, and sometimes it's easier to just turn the metal like this. And if you're going to um, saw these out, saw well outside this line. Otherwise, your circle will be too small. It's easier to take away metal than. It's actually impossible to add it unless you soldered something on here. Um, and then air, 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 saw it out. And you need to make at least uh, two for the outer parts of the bead. You know, this concept two domes, two half spheres. This is not a fully rounded one, it's not done. Um, so you want to do two at a time always. If you're going to make tons of these, go ahead and, and, and punch out or cut or buy all your discs at once and we move step by step. We, we work the same hole, the same depression with all the beads first and then we move to the second. Otherwise you're going to get really confused and all your beads are going to be different sizes. The goal here is to have the edges meet here without overhang at this point. We don't want like one like that. So. Uh, that's why we want to try to balance the size of these so that they're both the same size. Moving on, I'm going to get set up for the next doodah. So I have the studio assistant said she wanted to help today, so she's moved over. She did not move the chair herself, but probably could. That's the stuff they do when you're asleep at night and you wake up and the furniture is rearranged. We think it's poltergeist, but it's cats. So, I have a little list of some places that sell discs. Um, I will have all these links on my website. Um, Art Fire, Stampede Jewelry, Thunderbird Supply, Rio Grande, uh, among many others. Um, Rio sells these really thick copper ones, so I don't buy my copper ones from them. They're, I think they're 20 gauge and they're too thick to work with, but they have the silver ones. Um, okay, so the next thing we need to do is we've got our disc, either cut, sawn, punched, whatever, and this is one of the real ones. It's it's thick, uh, but I'm going to use this for my example because it's big. So what we need to do is find the center so that we can drill a straight hole, a centered hole through these beads. And so we're going to work on two beads at a time. Now there's two ways that are easy to do find center. One is to buy this centering tool here. And I believe this is from uh, Micromark. Um, I made a little adaption to adapter to it because um, if you're using a really thin gauge of metal, the disc tends to slip back here. So I just I have this on the website also, but I just slipped this piece of um, brass in here, 
and I just clip it here and what it does is it thickens this edge so this disc doesn't shoot out there so this fits in like that and I used to own pins oh my god found it it wasn't not on the floor okay so we've got our disc pushed up against the internal doodah angle in here and I'm going to flip it over and draw a line down that edge there. I'm going to rotate it. Draw another line. I'm going to rotate it and draw another line. So where these lines intersect is our center. So that's that's one way to do it. So the other method for finding center on a circle is to make these little templates which I have the directions how to on my website. Essentially what it is is you have um, this plastic and I like to use this stuff uh, because it is a grid and it's easier to put your spot right in the middle it just makes it cuter um, you can use this for the top and the bottom part of this little sandwich here um, if you have a disc cutter I have found that you can slide this paper this, this is a uh, acetate vellum, vellum you can slide it into your disc cutter when you're cutting your discs and cut your hole right then. It's a lot easier than using a divider to cut this through the plastic. Um, this stuff is tough to cut through with these because it's the whole center hole stretches and your circle gets out of round. So um, use two sheets of the, the grid paper, uh, one for the front, one for the back, and, and you want to have one that's all the way cut through. And the other one, it's basically, you know, you put it in and, and turn it like this to mark where the circle is. I can't really see that on that color. Let me try there. This was obviously set for a bigger circle, but I just wanted to show you what the circle looks like. So after you've traced out your bottom circle and cut your top circle um, and lined up your package by holding it to the light and making sure that both circles are completely on the top of each other. Remember, this is a doodah circle. We're not using that one. Tape it. And then where you have your little um, hole, the center hole left by your dividers, right there, we need to drill through that. And I'm going to use a 20-gauge um, drill bit to do so. And... I just want to make my pedal. I just want to make a little hole in here. I don't want too much. I'm just taking off the guts on the back. That's a new word, guts. This probably means something dirty in German. So we want to have a little hole in the back because this is where we're going to be putting our um, little punch to mark for um, the center on the disc, which I'll show you. So here we have the disc and the matching. Um, template and if Nancy could do this she put this disc in here and you want it perfectly lined up okay like that and I just hold it I just put it on the wood keep it in the same place Let it move check. it's better to check twice than screw it up completely and then at this point, I need to find my center punch in my mallet, which it's probably right in front of me. Yes. So I put the, the punch right into that little hole that we drilled and give it a tap. And now you have your center marked and go ahead and drill it with an 18, uh, 20 gauge drill bit. It's, um, jeez, oh I wrote it down somewhere. So that 20 gauge drill bit translates into a 67, number 67. Um, and you want to drill this hole because this will mark where your um, center is on your bead. You want to do this on both halves, obviously. And I drill, I go ahead and drill them out because this little divot we made could, will, will probably disappear during the hammering process um, because the punches hit on center. This is also a great way to help you find the center when you're using the punches. So I'll just go ahead and drill this. These uh, these 20 gauge drill bits um, break real easily so you don't want to have any sideways leaning on them. You want them 
to be really perpendicular to the metal and don't push real, real hard. The drill bit should do the work. So that's done. And um, the next step is to start to dome the beads. Um, for drilling these discs, these, um, with, especially with using mechanical tools that are powered by electricity, um, you you can hold the bigger ones by pushing, holding on top like this. You don't want your fingers over here holding it like this because the drill bit is going to spin this around and this is going to act like a saw blade on your fingers. It's this, the thinness of this metal and um, the smallness of this drill bit, you, it really shouldn't get hot at all. Um, if it is, you need to change drill bits. This, you know, you've seen me with really dull drill bits. They, they just take forever. And if you're taking forever, one thing to check I did the other day was mine was on reverse. So I kept drilling and every drill bit didn't work. So don't do that. Um, but also, you know, get, get some new drill bits. It really saves a lot of stress and pain on your fingers. Another way, especially with the smaller ones, is I put a little piece of uh, foam. Like, I don't know foam in here with some tape on my vice grips and you can clamp it down and drill it make sure it's flat and drill it by holding it with the vice grips because um, this is another way to keep your fingers from getting cut and um, also if it gets hot which it shouldn't to hold it so that's that's that so here we are at the doming area buckle up for safety um, the first thing you do, you've got your little drilled out disc and um, you're going to put it into a, um, a, a part of the die that's a couple millimeters, like one, one or two sizes larger than the bead. This is, uh, than the disc, this is 23 millimeters. So I'm going to put it into a 26 millimeter um, depression here. If yours isn't marked, do what I did and, and mark them because it really helps um, working to know what sizes you're working with. So you just I measure across the diameter and then just write it on with the Sharpie. Um, and then as for your um, punch, the punch numbers are written generally on the side of the punch. This block I have from Pepe has them written here too so I know which to use. So what we want to do is have a punch that's a couple millimeters smaller than the disc. So the depression is a couple millimeters larger, the punch is a couple millimeters smaller than the disc. Got it? Wish I had big bushy eyebrows. Crouch on marks. Okay, so we're gonna get ready to do this. So make sure that your disc doesn't have any um, goopies all over it, like little bits of metal or stuff like that. Um, you also don't want it dirty because the force of pounding this can drive the dirt into the like a secondary letter, layer on the metal. You also want your die to be clean and um, you want to put the little disc in the one that's a couple millimeters bigger and you want to have it on center and all we're going to do is hit this one to three times um, in the middle only, we want the metal to stretch on the bottom and fill the shape of this. We don't want to touch the sides. If we hammer the sides, it may not fit into the next size hole. So remember, I've got the, the couple millimeters smaller um, punch, and I'm going to line this sucker up. And that was that. So I think that's that. Okay, so that was two, right? One, two. So we have to do the same with this one. This is why you do them all at once. You don't have to keep back and forthing. And um, a lot of people keep charts on how, especially when you're making a lot of beads, on how many taps per half. Now this, of course, depends on the fact that you're hitting it with the equal force uh, every time. But we should be about right on here with these two. And that's step one. I don't. I mentioned that these are annealed, didn't I? Yes, I did. So now we're going to go down to um, the next size on this, which is what do we got here? We have 24. I hate this block. It just doesn't have enough holes. That's a 26. 
No, I'm going to go here, 22. And I'm going to use the same punch again. Am I? No, I'm going to go down one small. I'm going to go to the 19.8, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hit it in the center. Two taps. Come on. Two taps. Okay, so now we're ready to move to the third hole. Um, if you're using patterned metal, it's easier to stop like at, at this point. Uh, not easier, but well, it is easier. But if you're going to do um, a pattern on this, a disc bead has a lot less hammering in steel. So your pattern's going to retain it, its depth or whatever. Um, you don't, if you bring it to the full half hemisphere, the pattern gets, in some cases, especially down at this end, the bottom of the bead, it gets obliterated and um, the pattern gets distorted. So don't expect your pattern to stay perfect. It is going to move. There are nylon um, dies, blocks that you can use, and brass, although the brass is almost as bad as the steel as far as stretching. Um, you're not going to use steel punches with either one of those. You're going to use wood or like Delrun or something like that. They also make wood dapping blocks and honestly they have very limited um, depressions in them. I have not seen one with more than maybe eight depressions so you're real limited on the height that you can pull those up. But you, the reason you might want to do pattern on this, especially um, if you're going to solder this bead, is you could drill it through the seams on the side so it would become a focal point like this. But I'm not going to talk about how to do that in this video. Maybe we'll do it in the next if I get enough people going, please, please, please. So anyway, we're going to be doing it this way since we've already drilled our holes. And I'm going to move on to the next hole, which will be a couple millimeters smaller. Okay, so now I've skipped the 21 millimeters. I'm just going to go to the 20. It fits in here, and I'm using a 16.8 um, millimeter punch on this. I don't really want to hit the sides of the bead. That's one of the last steps that we do. And we got to keep this in here square. I might want to do one more on that. So I got to do three on this side. Let's see the difference on the bead already. Just from that moving into the next size. So put this in, and this is pretty much at level um, of the depression, whereas the other ones were a couple millimeters down. Ow, my finger was in there. This moved off center. There we go. Keep it on center. Hey, hey, hey now, hey. We've got aliens have invaded today. Everything has been weird and missing. Okay, so we got three. So we got our three, 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 three. Now, one thing you can do to see if you're hitting rather equally or not is to use your calipers to measure your bead heights and see how close you are. I'm not going to tell you until see if this is perfect or not. So I'm like 0.15 of a millimeter off on these, so we'll correct down the road. The most important thing besides that is that they fit together tightly. You know, the, the edges are not overlapping. So we're going to go to the next size, and I'll see you in a minute. So now I'm in an 18 millimeter, and you can see it's kind of sticking up over the edge. And this is a little, this is where it gets scary because you can start marring the sides um, if you hit the sides against the steel edge and you'll have a little ring around it. Um, the dapping punch that I'm using is a 15.1. So I still, I don't want to touch the sides. I want to keep it on center. I want to get it down in there. So I've got that down in there. I've got a little line on the side. See it there? And I can clean that up if 
uh, sanding. Okay, I'm going to do the other one. Make sure it's still centered. Sorry. I could get Lisa a black eye with this hammer. God, I hope I don't. Okay, so now we got, now notice that when we hammered that, that went down below the edge of the uh, depression. So I'm going to check these. Make sure they're pretty close. Yeah. Okay, so at this point, um, we're going to go into one more depression and we're going to change things a little bit. We're no longer going to hit it on the bottom. We're going to start shaping the sides. And this will be like the final step, unless there's corrections to be made if you hit it off center or something. So um, I'm going to go into the 16 millimeter, which sticks way above, and I'm going to use, uh, what am I going to use, 11, and I'm going to work at, this, at a steep angle. And then I'm going to start moving the punch down a little closer to the bottom. I don't want to spend all day on this. I'm going to go up. That's a 16, so I'm going to get a... See how our 15 works in there. You have to accommodate for the metal thickness. Okay, so now I'm going to take... This is just a millimeter um, above. And I'm just going to hammer this in. And that's going to round up the... the hemisphere to this the size of the dap, uh, the punch. If it's not the right size, you can go in and anneal them and go through the circular um, spiral process again to help bring it, the shape a little back in if it's too too big. Um, if it's too small, you can always use a bigger punch to try to open it up a little bit. So there's always some wiggling and adjusting done towards the step before the very last step. The very last step would be using a punch that fills as much as it can the uh, die like we just did with the 16 millimeter um, depression with a 15 millimeter punch. So I'm going to finish this up and uh, we'll talk about the next step. So here we have our two um, half, half, of, half domes. Sounds like a Stephen King book. Um, so what we're going to do is finish the, um, the solderless bead in the next video. And I want to thank you for coming. And we will see you very soon.